what is happening people coach Brad K long time no talk how we doing all right first things first disclaimer I imagine most of you will have clicked on this to listen to the podcast with Homer Helios I just want you to know that Homer said it was okay for me to do this and if you want to get straight to the podcast just skip a couple of minutes in I imagine I'm gonna ramble for 10 12 15 minutes um, just about myself and my situation what I've been doing um, so if you don't want to listen to my update and what I've been up to, just skip into the podcast. I won't get offended, don't worry. But if you'd like to stay, pretty much I'm just going to ramble off the dome and tell you why the podcast took a break, what happened to me this summer, where I am now on this tropical beach, what I've been up to, how did I get here, la da 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 all of that. So uh, I'm mainly doing this because I have quadrupled my Instagram following in the last... I don't know, two weeks. So a couple of my reels went absolutely crazy viral. Some of them getting almost 4 million views. I've got a couple over a million views. So there's a lot of new faces. So first things first, hello, how you doing? Coach Bart K, my name is Bart. I was born in Poland, raised in Ireland. And for the last three years, I have been documenting my journey, diving deep into holistic health and lifestyle. And so it started in the Netherlands when I dropped out of uni and then, yeah, stayed in the Netherlands argued with my parents for a bit but then they said it's okay I had another business going on the side there I then moved to Spain then I moved to uh, London yeah I've just been solo traveling for about three years now living pretty much everywhere um, and yeah this year was a little wild so I uh, started off the year in Turkey uh, a lot of the OGs will remember that started the year in Turkey Turkey was going fantastic and then I got an opportunity to live on a yacht for a month with a dear friend, Layla, if you're watching, hello. So I stayed on a yacht on the Mediterranean in Greece for yeah about a month and then I tried to get back to Turkey and I ended up getting deported because uh, it would have meant that I'm overstaying my visa. So I got deported from Turkey and after living there, it was like all sorted. I had the Airbnb sorted, I had a GF, I had like four cats, uh, real ones will remember. And so I had to run away to Greece. And then I ran away to Greece. I was in Kos for a little bit, where I had been on the yacht as well. I was in Kos, but then I just couldn't find an apartment in Kos at a reasonable price. So I ended up going to Rhodes. I was in Rhodos. So I was living in Rhodos for you know, maybe about two months and everything was going perfect. I absolutely loved it. But then uh, there was wildfires in Greece. Now, a lot of you will know that just from the news, whatever. Not that we like to watch the news, but uh, yeah, I ended up pretty much evacuating myself from Greece as well. So then I was back in Ireland. I was like, well, shit, now I've been deported from Turkey. Uh, Greece caught on fire. What am I going to do? Um, and I ended up making some friends online. And then it ended up being an IRL friendship. Uh, we went surfing a couple of times. And within, I don't know, three or four days, it was decided that I'm going to move to Mauritius with these guys. And that explains why I am on this tropical beach right now on the east coast of Africa, a little tiny desolate island. And I'm absolutely loving it out here. Now, a lot of you will know that already because I imagine most of you are coming from my Instagram. So yeah, I'm in Mauritius. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, so I guess that explains why the podcast took a bit of a break as well. Why I wasn't consistent at all. You know, I was... Uh, First things first, I was on a yacht, so connection wasn't too good, and it wasn't the best circumstances to record a podcast. And I, to be honest, I didn't even want to, you know, I just wanted to enjoy myself, live the yacht life. Like, we were sailing around all these different Greek islands every day, so, you know, I just wanted to be present in the moment, enjoy that. Um, I kind of regret now that I didn't take much content even of it, but, uh, you know, it's all up here. Not everything needs to be documented. Um, and uh, yeah, then I was in Greece, just enjoying myself as well in Rhodes. My Wi-Fi in my apartment was absolutely terrible, which was uh, a bit annoying. So I didn't do any podcasts there. And uh, yeah, now I will slowly be getting back into the momentum of doing podcasts because I absolutely love it. You know, I've had some of the coolest guests ever on and I'm so grateful for the opportunity. So yeah, it's something I love doing, something you'll see a lot more. But uh yeah, listen, I was gonna do this little intro, you know, when I'm back home and I'm showered up because right now, obviously, I'm half naked on the beach, about to do a jog and then jump in. I'm a little sweaty, whatever, but uh, if you wait for the perfect time, you'll never do anything in life because the perfect time never comes. Um, 
But yeah, if you've listened this far, it's been about five minutes. If you would like like a full update on who I am and what I've been up to the last three years because I could absolutely write a book, feel free to let me know in the comments. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, just shoot me a DM, tell me, oh yeah, that was pretty interesting. Uh, Cause honestly, I could write a book, you know, and I have vlogs going back to uh, pretty much most of that. I didn't vlog at all in London, but uh, I have a lot of like Instagram content shorts and TikToks and reels and all of that shit, but uh, no long form documentation. So, you know, I've actually been thinking of doing like a solo podcast and just talking about the travels and adventures and how I had a street fight in Turkey and how Greece caught on fire and how I met this chick and how I did that, whatever, the yacht. Um, so if that's something you'd like, just let me know. Um, so we're coming up to six minutes now. Thought I was going to ramble for a lot longer, but uh, I feel like I said everything I needed to say. So yeah, just to wrap it up, this summer, deported from Turkey, Greece caught on fire, and then within a week, pretty much, I ended up on the in the furthest place I've ever been. Like, I imagine most of you watching don't even know where Mauritius is. Now, that's not to be offensive to you, whatever. I'll be real, I didn't even know where Mauritius was myself um, until pretty much I booked the flight. Uh, it's a crazy little place. Um, I imagine you see me on my stories doing all sorts of cool stuff. Like this is the local beach. It's absolutely beautiful. Look at that, like palm trees, white sand. It's a bit overcast today, so uh, you're not seeing like the blue, blue turquoise, crystal clear waters, but uh, it's absolutely beautiful. Like yesterday we hiked Le Morne as well. Uh, I've made a bunch of friends, I've met cool people, and obviously with my Instagram taking off from about 5k to now 20k followers, I've been like recognized and stuff, which is uh, super weird, you know, I'm just a normal dude, uh, but I feel like that jump in followers was long overdue because I've been posting and posting and posting for like three years now with pretty much no results, like 5k, what's 5k, you know, uh, I felt like I was shadow banned or whatever for a long time when I was posting like really valuable content and all I had to do was kind of tone it down a little and uh, diversify, not make it as niche and just speak to a larger audience and it worked. So yeah, the move now is to kind of gather people through that like, uh, I won't say generic content, but like the more like general content, if you know what I mean, like kind of shoot out a net like uh, like a, as if you're fishing to like a large pool audience of people something that i know will get views and then once i attract those people i will provide value to those that stick around so it's like a gather and then give if you know what i mean um so yeah enough rambling eight minutes listen if you've listened this far much love i appreciate that a lot look the sun is coming out so that means it is my time to jog so yeah, uh, this podcast with Homo Helios, this was recorded two days ago. I um, just didn't get around to editing it. It was on a Saturday. It's now Monday. So yeah, this will be going up later today. Listen, if you've listened this far, shoot me a message. If you haven't, no worries. The podcast with Homo Helios is starting now. I hope you enjoy. Cheers. Much love. Mwah. Yes, folks. Welcome to episode 15 of the Fundamental Wisdom Podcast with your host, Coach Bard K. On this podcast is where we ask the questions that you want the answers to and discuss ideas in order to help you level up to your highest self. We have practical discussions to help you level up physically, mentally, spiritually, socially, and financially. And on this podcast, I'm honored to be joined by a very special guest. This podcast was long in the making and is long, long, long overdue. I am honored to be joined by a fellow holistic health enjoyer, Florida's finest honey producer, and a true OG member of the Instagram Solosphere community. Say hello to Homer Helios. Homer, brother, good morning. How you doing? What's up, coach? Good, 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 man. Here oh. at Miami Beach with the sun and the ocean near me. Everything's going, going great, man. It's a great morning. Yeah, I saw your story. It looks uh, nothing short of amazing out there. Forgetting the uh, technical time zone difficulties we had this morning. <laughs> I'm happy to be joined by you here, brother. Definitely, man. Post post sunrise, I'm I'm happy to be here as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know what? Now that you're sat crisscross on Miami Beach after a lovely morning there, let's dive a little more into that perhaps, you know? So, uh, you know, obviously I called it the Instagram Solar Sphere solar sphere i feel like that's the uh that's an appropriate name tell us why do you 
you know, spend your mornings on the beach. Is there some sort of greater importance or is it just to enjoy yourself? Like is looking at the sun in the morning important? Why did you get up for sunset? What are you doing out there? Talk to me. All of the above, man. I mean, definitely there's obviously the the health benefits of of waking up early, getting that natural red light into your eyes to get that circadian rhythm going so that you can have a good night's sleep on that same day. And obviously I'm not doing it every single morning as I'd like to. Um, but any morning, any night that I can go to sleep early enough to get a good eight hours of sleep, wake up and I'm a good like 20 minutes away from from the beach and Really, I mean, obviously that's happening, but I'm not in front of the sunrise thinking, wow, this red light is really, really, really setting my circadian rhythm up, right? Um, there's obviously a deeper, I don't know if it's a spiritual, what word to, to use, but it's a very human experience to put yourself in front of, you know, the oldest possible art piece that's ever existed. I <laughs> I, I remember I, I came out here a few months ago and it had been a while since I had seen the sunrise and... I, I came out here as it was literally peeking over the ocean. There was like 30 people here just just gazing at it. And I was like, this is available every morning. Like this is this is amazing. This is the most human thing you could possibly do to start the morning. And everyone understood it. It was just no one was speaking. Everyone was just watching it. And it really is just the opposite of what you see all all around you, right? I mean, everyone's waking up, scrolling, mm. doing doing something at anti-human for sure so to, to start your day as human as possible and really connect to those and ancestral roots is is the baseline is a baseline health choice that everyone should really try to prioritize absolutely dude i agree so much as you said sometimes for me it's no practical as well to go see the sunrise the beach is a little bit away and then you know if it's cloudy whatever like all these little factors but whenever i do i have the best days ever there's just something about like you said looking at the oldest art piece you know just staring there it all at the yeah and it just awakens it's, it's uh on you it's a live painting literally it's wow. constantly changing it's happening it's it's raising the ocean is moving with it the clouds are moving it's it's live art it's always happening it's pretty crazy but beautiful take right so you're sat on miami beach you know what i want to ask you right so Obviously, I've been in this Instagram space quite a while now, and I've connected with a lot of people from Miami, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously, being European myself, all like most of the things I see about America is that America is going downhill and that a lot of people are trying to escape and that, you know, it's this crazy land full of lefties and everyone's arguing and it's just a big old shit show. But it seems like Miami is thriving, you know? So what? Yeah, what yeah about Miami, like this outcast paradise where everyone's into the, the sun and honey and all <laughs> what's happening i'd i'd say there's definitely a niche you know in, in every city that's trying to 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 better them themselves and realizes that there's a a problem in the modern world and i feel like you know i'm sure you can attest to to headlines really just they're 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 they're, they're there to shock you right they're there to put you in a state of panic and fear so although America in a lot of senses is kind of going downhill, it really is still, it's, I mean, the beauty is in the eye of the, the beholder, right? If you're willing to live true to your values and what America once stood for, then you can kind of resonate that to the people around you. And I feel like Miami is low hanging fruit because you're next to the ocean. So it's hard to kind of, you know, not prioritize your health. Obviously, there's literally people walking around here that have been up the the whole night partying so there's definitely a kind of a strong balance that that you have to create living here and i was born here so i'm one of the few miami natives and i've been able to harness that balance in my 27 years <laughs> i feel you man and you know what that's a big thing you said that living beside a body of water just keeps you healthy doesn't it like you're frequently going to the beach you're shirtless a lot of the time you know, this, the weather's good, it's sunny, so you kind of want to look good. So, yeah, dude, like, one of the best things I've ever done was moving from being inland to the beach. And right now I'm lucky enough to be on a tropical island, so I feel like health is, like, on autopilot here, if you know what I mean. I probably feel oh, yeah. like I'm in Miami, you know? You got the high temperatures and you got the sun, you got the water. So, yeah. Yeah, if you're, if you're near a beach and you're pale, there's no excuse. <laughs> like there's 
there's people here even that I see that, you know, they don't prioritize the the beach. It's like, why not just live like in Michigan where you're landlocked or something? I don't know. I don't really understand it. There you go, dude. Right. Right. As you're on that point of being pale and, you know, living beside the <laughs> beach, but not even going to the beach. I would like you to tell me from the depths of your mind, what do you think is wrong with society today? Society today, excuse me. Why are people doing so many detrimental things to their health? What is happening? And on that, what are some of the most detrimental things people do to their health nowadays? Well, I think I think there's really a like a massive dissonance in the in the the populace where they're listening to health advice from people who aren't healthy, people who just want to leverage their power to get to basically for for profit gain. You know, there's a lot of people in power that are spreading things that aren't true whether it comes whether it comes down to the sun being unhealthy certain foods that are being pushed on all the shelves that aren't healthy and i think a lot of people have you know their own personal realities to deal with and either they're i wouldn't say i mean it's it's your obligation to prioritize your health but there are a lot of people that are just blindly following the media and they end up not even realizing how unhealthy they are. They're in like a subhuman state. And even the thought of this vril and this vitality is so far removed that they look at us <laughs> sunning our balls and slocking liver and doing all these things that we look crazy. We look fringe, but really, I mean, this is how humans have thrived forever. So we we are kind of those nodes and those people that are here to kind of spread the message of what real health and vi vitality looks like. Mm -hmm. Dude, I feel that. And you know what? Just like we were talking on our little chit chat before I hit the record button, with those reels going viral on my profile, you wouldn't believe the amount of hate that I've got. Thousands, thousands of probably tens of thousands of hate comments. But there is one key factor that links them all together. Whenever someone dropped the hate comment, you just click on the profile and, I mean, enough said, if you know what I mean. Like, the physiognomy check <laughs> never fails. I hate to say it, and you know what, but it is what it is. The physiognomy check never fails. Which... The, the physiognomy check is is real, Matt, and what's inevitable also is going to be that that hate. You know, there's always going to be a love-hate relationship with with things people don't understand, and that's why having having the willingness to have that open mind and always be willing to change. You know, I'm not saying I know everything about health or mm. in 10 years, I'm going to be thinking the exact same thoughts I know now, but at least be willing to change and build a new foundation. Mm. Super important. And, and I know you mentioned things that are detrimental to health. I would say uh, the top three are really going to be blue light. Blue light's huge. I mean, how often, if you look in our an ancestry, did people just have a fake artificial blue light screen six inches from their eyes all day long, right? And then working in environments that are under blue light. Um, also, I'd say, uh, I mean, just food food quality, man. Like, look at what you're eating. Is it is it real food? Or is it some processed concoction of chemicals and color dye and things that are just literally altering the chemistry that makes you a person? And obviously, that's going to affect your mindset and it's going to lead to hateful comments on Instagram who from people who aren't living that way you know so really just take take a step back zoom out and look at the way you're living and try to adjust it to live more in a way that you know not cavemen but the primal man lives right mm. yeah that's one thing that bugs me as well is uh People coming on my profile, and it probably happens to you too as well, and commenting shit like, oh yeah, caveman, oh, but cavemen only lived 20 years. Why are you trying to be a caveman if we have so many spoils of modernity? And I feel like if you comment that and you actually think that you're so lost, like, you're yeah. just, what are you even talking about? Like, we eat that's way because it's healthy for us. It doesn't mean that we're going back to caveman or whatever. And maybe we are, you know, like we're these health hippies, whatever, but we take advantage of modernity as well. Like, you know, we take, you know, these spoils alive as they come to us as well. It's not about being a caveman and renouncing the modern world and saying that it's all bad and evil and that, you know, stepping away from it all. No, it's just like thriving like we have for millennia in the modern world. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's 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 a it's a in it's an integration process, man. Obviously, I'm looking at 
walk everywhere I go. I'm going to use my car to get places. It's the classic Liver King thing too, right? I, you can love, hey, Liver King all you want. There's definitely things to hate. Um, but I mean, the guy is, he built a business. He's, he's obviously su successful and he's just integrating that primal lifestyle within that. So anybody who can kind of be a titan of industry, and I'm not just like boosting Liver King up. This is goes to anybody that's building something and integrating, you know, a lifestyle that takes more effort, takes more discipline. If anything, that should be revered instead of put put down by by the masses. And you know, it's not extremely realistic even to say we're living full primal. I mean, even if you're like you're you're intermittent fasting, right? Um, the real pri the real primal man that we're trying to simulate. He didn't have like ribeyes in the freezer and eggs chilling, waiting for him to get eaten. Like he's literally waking up in a true suffering, probably with a dread to go hunt his actual food. So we can only simulate it as much as possible. And it's always going to be a rewarding process. Mm. Chill you. Oh, dude, Liver King, now that you brought him up. Did you see <laughs> Hey, this is a little side note. Did you see his eye? I hope he's okay, man. Uh, Whatever about yeah. strange in the steroids and naughty or not, and he owns this company and he promotes it, whatever. I like the message, so respect for him. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, you mean he's he, he's creating desiccated supplements that improve your health and you know making money off of it. I mean, what a what an awful guy. Like, no man, that's obviously if people are taking his supplements and seeing benefits, then more more power to him. Mm. Homer, there's one thing you said there just a couple of minutes ago, and I want to make a question out of it. So you said that in 10 years time, you probably won't be thinking the same thoughts as now, which is a very important point, because I feel like throughout your life, if you're not a different person every five years, you're probably doing something wrong. You know, you have to grow and evolve and be ever changing and kind of just be in pursuit of this truth. And you never really know what that truth is. You might come close to it, or so you may think, but then one thing leads to another, and then, you know, two weeks after you think you found the truth, everything changes once again, and it's just never-ending, just spiral, and you keep going down and down the rabbit hole. Um, so you said in 10 years' time, right? How about 10 years ago? What was Homer like then? How about, you know, <laughs> back the past? Let's talk about your roots, Um. I'm going to say a little spoiler here because I believe on your Instagram story, I saw that you were a bit of a stoner, a bit of a, <laughs> the, uh, well, in, in now, that, now it was a while ago. Huh? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you definitely fall into the, the classic being a 17 teen year old and, you know, you, you don't really know what it means to have an independent thinking mind and you kind of just. I mean, you you do you want to have that sense of you're a, you're an individual and you're a person, but you're also who you spend your your time with, right? So I had a lot of friends in high school in Miami that obviously partying, smoking weed, yeah, whatever the substances may be. Um, but I was also a gym bro, right? Like I was definitely I my my parents were were really fit growing up, so I've always had a sense of uh, fitness and health as as a baseline. Um, and it just gets to a point where you have to either prioritize one or prioritize the other and one of them's going up and one of them's going down so that's just kind of the awakening arc that everyone should go go through and i was a gym bro back then in every sense like with the health with the you know i mean just you, you kind of you you fall you get pigeonholed into this these illusions of health you see a bodybuilder and you think they're extremely healthy you think that they're the pinnacle of, of health then you realize that they're eating like gummy worms and pounding this whey powder that's destroying their gut. And then they get on stage and they're half dead, pumped with steroids. It's like, this isn't obviously the way. So the constant iteration is key. Mm. And uh, it's, it's always happening, man. You always have to, you have to make choices and broaden your time horizons with them. Mm. So you can't be thinking about tomorrow. You have to be living in the now, but also knowing that in three, five, ten, ten years, um, you have to have those foundations, but know that everything is subject to change and will change. The only, the only constant is change, right? Mm. That's deep, right? So, yeah. um, you said that you were a gym bro. So to me, that just screams like you know, chicken and rice, protein powder, pre workout. Was that the case? Um, yeah, I, I, I guess it was. I, I mean, without the chicken and rice, I, I think the uh 
I think the gym bro things that I took hold of was the whey powder, the pre workouts, and um, kind of the opposite of the chicken and rice. I was never eating enough. I always claimed to be a hard gainer, and um, I was eating like a bird in the process. So mm. definitely just not eating enough, not caring what I I was eating. So that process has also been a a process of growth as well, and just pulling that thread, pulling that string of diet and and gym workouts and gym habits and thought habits and it all is like a thread of self-awareness that is just never stops getting pulled hmm. and how did that thread of awareness come about you know how did you go from like a standard gym bro eating scraps under eating hard gain or whatever to who you are now yeah. you know when did that come about how did it come about what's different now do you feel better talk to me Oh, I definitely feel feel better for sure. I'll answer that one off rip. But um, uh, discovering like biohacking, I I guess like Ben Greenfield, Dave Asprey, these types of dudes really, um, it's not even like what they were preaching. It was more like, oh, there's another side to the story. Like you're living kind of in this uh, this illusion, and obviously. I mean, I wouldn't say everybody, but everyone should want to live a long, healthy life. And my concern immediately became less gains and more like long longevity pilled. So I was like, how do I just, I was super obsessed with telomeres and, and just ways to stimulate uh, anti-aging and growth and just wanting to live as long as, as possible and as healthy as, as possible. You know, I don't want to live the last five years in a hospital bed. I want to live, I want to be doing this the last day of my life, you know, waking up for the sunrise, feeling alive, feeling healthy and slowly drifting into the abyss. <laughs> I feel you, man. I feel you. That, it, that's deep, man. Right. So I have a question now. I don't know if you want to spill the sauce too much, but uh, I would greatly appreciate it. And I'm sure the viewers and listeners would too, if you spilled the beans and told us about your findings. So what did you come across there, you know? in your search of how to live a longer and healthier life. Do you have any keys for longevity? Is there anything you're doing now? For example, that's a bit unorthodox or out of the norm. Talk to me. I mean, I, I, it's like full circle, right? Like I'm not, I used to take a bunch of supplements. I used to have a handful of supplements I would take out every morning and it kind of goes full circle back to, uh, to holistic health, right? To living primarily living how our, how our ancestors did because those are the things that brought us into existence. And although they lived a shorter life, they're also being, I mean, they were living a completely different life, not based on the dietary and the holistic side, but there's obviously they break a leg, you're probably going to die. You know, you do this. It's the the lifespan is definitely shortened for a reason. Now we have the the option to, you know, just take take advantage of the real nutrition that's in food, eating whole foods, getting that that sunlight grounding you know these these basic principles of, of human thriving life mm. is really what has made me feel whole more than any supplement more than any uh, little tidbit that I could could give you it's just returning back to your roots eating real food constant getting that constantly fo focusing on like blood burning intense movement right like when you're you're we're not sedentary beings. If you're if you're not moving every day and making that a priority, then that stillness is gonna slowly rot your health and decrease your life and 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 really the the priority now isn't even like live as long as possible, right? It's like live as full as possible mm -hmm. until I don't anymore, right? Like it's not tomorrow is never promised and this is kind of more on the spiritual like perspective mindset side of things, but if you're living healthy today, then that's all you ever really have. So just focus on that. Mm -hmm. Dude, I love how you preach the importance of holistic health. You know, I would say I was a gym bro back myself back in the day. So yeah, it's such a shallow definition of health and it's such a skewed perspective yeah. most people have. You know, it's like you, you get a six pack, you're healthy. You know, like, dude, I'd argue that some of the people with the best physiques in this industry, the fitness industry or whatever you want to call it, are some of the unhealthiest people. Isn't that like a big oh, yeah. paradox, paradigm? Don't you find that? Like, you know, they get so... Yeah, they're just, they're, they're just shilling these supplements to you that 
that do nothing while they're probably like injecting all all the anabolics they can just to keep up their brand. <laughs> and it's just a whole falsified view of of health that the masses just really cling cling to because they don't want to just anything that's too simple or too hard people aren't gonna gravitate to you know if you can't preach just get more sun and walk outside more work out more and eat real food they they, they want a quick pill they want a quick fix because everything is so dopamine dopamine driven goldfish kind of near nearsighted life that that just kind of plugs in perfectly to their mindset and their reality exactly you see it you know the biggest creators because technically i guess we're in the fitness niche on instagram as well so you know the biggest yeah. creators on instagram in our niche are the guys or you know in the grand sphere of our niche i'm talking here they're the guys that you know she'll oh no yeah low calories and zero calorie sweetener and uh just you know don't eat beef because it's too high in fat and calories and this and that but is such a bad approach to nutrition and i'm saying that having been there myself dude i remember i used to like do you know that like zero calorie syrup stuff like the artificial sweetener syrup you can put on shit dude i used to like chug that out the bottle to get healthy because it's zero calories dude like that it's such a yeah it really is uh it really is a dissonance man like calories in and calories out not not that like that simple equation doesn't work. You eat more, you know, you're there's fat people for a reason and there's skinny people for a reason, but you shouldn't let that be the driving force behind your dietary choices. You know, there's micronutrients, there's amino acids, there's so many different things that contribute to the building blocks of actual health that, and that's the same thing. It's too simple. Like you want to have a simple drink to zero calorie syrup, you're going to look great. Like, no, drink, drink the real maple syrup by the dozen. Like just, you know, <laughs> it's real food. Exactly. Real food. Right. Now that we're on the topic of nutrition, talk to me about that. Obviously, you're a fantastic chef yourself, so I'm sure you've got some uh, nutrition secrets and tips and tricks for the listeners. Let's hear it all. Likewise. Likewise, man. Your meals are spectacular, it looks like. Um, I'll stop you right there just for one second. They will be even more amazing like they were before in December when I'm back in Ireland. Because currently, on this small, desolate African island, not only am I catering for four grown men, um, which is actually surprisingly difficult. You wouldn't believe, like, you think, okay, I just make what I make times four. But, uh, you know, when it's one person doing that in a kitchen with uh, minimal equipment, and then obviously the food quality isn't as good as uh, as Ireland, as Europe, whatever, it's uh, it's quite difficult. So the meals have definitely taken um, yeah. a, a slight tad of a turn downwards for now bro i was i was just in i was just in hawaii sorry to to cut you off but i was just in hawaii with the uh, io boys the irrational optimist and i was actually like helios the chef there i was cooking for 20 guys man 20 oh. ravenous 20 ravenous men with maybe like a couple of helpers he, here and there but that was a task man just i i actually scrambled 122 eggs out at once yeah, we, but in we had four or five gigantic tads. Gigantic pan, or what was going on there? Gigantic pan, five people cracking eggs. It was a, uh, it was a you know, shit show. It was so funny though. I hope you have some content. Was, I think I've seen that on your Instagram. <laughs> wow. Yeah, while I was there, I think I posted a few things of like just six guys just cracking eggs for ten minutes straight. That's one right. Nutrition, talk to me. What do you got? Yes. Yeah, man. So, I mean, focus on eggs, meat, fruit, you know, cook it in, in fats, in animal fats, butter, aloe, whatever you, I mean, uh, extra virgin olive oil. Obviously, avoid these rancid processed oils literally used as machine lubricants like the canola oils, seed oils, co the cotton seeds, the peanuts, all these types of things are just going to they're really high. I mean, they get oxidized at, at high high heats. They ruin your your set your satiety levels to overeating. That's why everyone is so obese. Um, and you know, I used to be really really anti veg. Obviously, I think a lot of people were in the in the stages of that whole diet kind of taking off. And not that I'm pro veg now, but I've kind of come to the con conclusion that you know. Excuse us, folks. We had a little tiny technical difficulty. 
Homer's phone overheated in the hot Miami sun, but we are back. And you were telling me that you have come to the conclusion that vegetables are... <laughs> I wouldn't say all vegetables are. And yeah, my, my phone is not a solar warrior like uh, we are. I couldn't take it. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm not going to say include all veg vegetables. You know, uh, there are definitely going to be some anti-nutrients and phytic acid and all these types of uh, like folates and these things that are definitely going to ruin our gut and kind of create an in inflamed state overall. But if you could slowly integrate, at least what I do, I eat, I eat arugula. I eat, I mean, I've always eaten potatoes, but sweet potatoes, I know tomato isn't a vegetable, but I used to not include that. And now I do, even though they're a, 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 a nightshade, um, carrots, I've included these, these things. And usually I, I include them like in a stew. So I, I feel like if vegetables are really, really supple and like, there's like bone broth really soaking in them, it's kind of easier for you to di digest and kind of absorb their uh, nutrients. And even with the, the anti-nutrients, right, there is that kind of theory or that philosophy of hor hormesis, where if things are if things are negatively affecting your body, then your body gets stronger from them. You know, I'm not saying to go drink canola oil or take a shot of canola oil every morning to get stronger, but that is definitely a real thing. I'm sure. But all, but all, all, overall, you know, the, the tenants of stick to whole real foods, right? Mm. That's going to be principle. It's so simple, right? I feel like every standard gym bro dot jpeg go th goes through this transition of you know like mom's cooking to then over over complicating the diet like so much like beyond belief or actually no there's another stage in there there's like the chicken and rice stage which you know you're eating chicken and rice and broccoli like all these bland foods but then comes that over complication of like best foods for macros and best supplements and best pre-workout and protein powder vanilla shake but baja blast whatever all this crap and then you know, you go all, like through this whole spectrum, you know, for example, like there's people that were vegan and this and that and all these diets are so complicated, but it all just comes down to eating like a human at the end of the day. Just yeah. And it, it's also like, it's just, it really, it's runs parallel with like this over stimulus. Like, you know how there's people that, you know, they play video games when they're young and then they kind of grow out of it mm. and they want to like kind of focus on things that actually matter. Um, it, I kind of view the same thing. I like actually, I had this thought the other day, like it's pretty, it's like eating those types of food and the Baja Blast protein shakes is the equivalent of paying like Fortnite 12 hours a day. It's like, it's just colorful. It's it's colorful. It's it's interesting. It's it's candy flavored. It's like, dude, that's actually childish be behavior. <laughs> you know, like a mature, uh, a sign of maturity is actually caring about what is affecting your biology and how that affects your output and how that affects everything around you. So it's, it's super important to kind of grow out of not only video games, but chips. You know, if you're, if you're above the age of 21 and you're eating cool ranch Doritos is a, it, there's a problem. <laughs> What's the thing problem? that uh, I preach personally is not to be orthorexic as well. So not to draw the line anywhere and like, Obviously, there is certain principles that I follow. Like, I, for example, I don't eat seed oils. I don't eat any yeah. artificial preservatives or sweets or chemicals, anything lab made. But anything that comes from the ground, from nature, basically gets a pass from me. There's certain things that, you know, shouldn't be included as much. But if they're 100% natural, they get the pass. And one little spoil of modernity is the fact that with just a little bit of looking around, you can pretty much find every single food that you want to eat and have to you know like healthy like a healthy version like you can eat ice cream you can eat chocolate you can eat sweets you can have a paste exactly. you can have just about anything it's just about the ingredients of the food which you know that was such a big mindset shift for me because you know like you have you see people eating burgers and you're like, oh, I could never like a burger like oh my that's so unhealthy like a burger but you could actually make a burger be healthy, you know, just get yeah. one, get a good burger, get high quality meat, fry that up in beef tallow, not canola. Like it's so simple. But yeah. That's my, yeah. It's little, it's little, little choices to make that will make a big difference. And really it gets to a point where your palate and your baseline health changes so much that 
you look at that other option and you're just like, that's, you know, you're turned off by it. You don't even really crave it anymore. Mm. Dude, when you quit seed oils, like completely, I know it's all seed oils, like, oh, this was covered three years ago, whatever. Like, this is not new information. <laughs> when you quit seed oils for like, I don't know, even a few weeks probably, but like for me, it's been years now. I, I literally, I stay the F away. Um, once you taste like that preservative, like chemical, artificial taste, you're just disgusted. Like you don't crave the same food as you did back then. Yeah. Remember when I was in that gym bro phase? Like you crave cheat meals, right? Like you just, you wish you could have that Ben and Jerry's and that McDonald's or KFC, whatever it is for you. But now I'm just like in this stage of food freedom. Like I just yeah. I don't crave bad food anymore. And that it's is a liberating feeling. Yeah, it's it's a there's a negative like feed feedback loop with the whole cheat cheat meal. It's like you're eating really good and then you reward yourself with harm. It's like how back how backwards is is that? And then there's there's people that will will say uh, unknowingly like, oh, you're you're so healthy, you your body must be able to to take the. I mean, it can technically, obviously, you're not gonna I'm not gonna die if I go right now to McDonald's and eat some some fries, but. I will feel it. And the reason that is, is because if you continue to feed yourself trash food, your body adapts to processing trash food and trash, trash everything. Now, if you're living on high octane, real premium fuel, it's like putting um, really bad fuel in like a Porsche. It's like, it's not going to operate correctly. So you're now on that standard for a reason. So continue on that standard. Feel you, dude. I would say I'm pretty sensitive now like the food I used to eat back in the day, if I have it now, like, you know, back then you're unconsciously just stuffing your face, whatever, da, 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 this crap, you'd feel okay. You know, you don't even know how bad you feel versus now if I have something really awful, which I don't, but you know, whatever, sometimes I'm stuck somewhere in an airport, or whatever, or just so hungry, like you end up eating something awful, but you feel it now, don't you? I feel like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I know. If, if you're, if, if you're traveling, like the way that that you do i'm I'm sure i mean it, it's it's always better to fast than than eat trash but there is a limit to to that so you know in in the moment if you're in that situation you have to eat some suboptimal fuel that's where you know you just gotta believe this is fueling me in 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 the moment and i'll i'll, I'll be right back to my premium self any second you know it's all it's all the mindset too at the end of the, that day will you Right. So we're on mindset now. Let's talk a bit about mindset. You know, there's one thing I want to ask you because I feel like you know the perfect answer to this question. And it is a reoccurring DM I receive in my message inbox or whatever you want to call it, reoccurring daily from a lot of young guys. And that is finding purpose in life as a man. I feel like it's getting more and more difficult to find clarity on what that is for you. And I want to know if you have any thoughts on that. Finding purpose. Yeah, uh, self-imposed suffering, self-imposed struggle. You know, um, for forever we had rites of passages. We had ways. You know, you're a boy now, and now you're a, you're a man. Here we just have. I mean, not here, but everywhere. Kind of, you just have this uh, indoctrination period where, like, this the state grabs a hold of your mindset, grabs a hold of your thinking, and you kind of just effortlessly are pushed into this world where. You know, you're you're you have these primal reptilian brain urges of being a man, and and that kind of transmutes itself to these addictive tendencies, these maladaptive personality traits. And I think the body is really smart, and the reptilian brain is far smarter than than the mind that we listen to on a daily basis. And the body is always signaling for you to to better yourself, right? If there's any type of, I think I, I posted about this recently. Like your 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 pain is your power, and there's there's pain in in disease, disease, right? There's pain in bad relationships. There's pain in harboring judgments, and I, I think to be a man is to kind of strip yourself of who you think you are and face these demons and and you know put yourself in the gym, run, swim, whatever you have to do to kind of put yourself in in physical struggle and see how you end up at the other side of that is um, definitely key. But that, that's also there's a point of diminishing return to that too, because talking about mindset, like you can go to the gym every day and you can still be a hyper normie, right? Like living and 
just completely being a, an, an NPC. So it's not only about going to the, the gym, it's about, you know, taking the time to zoom out and have your own thoughts. You know, if you can't close your eyes and be in silence for 15 minutes, how do you even know that you're thinking your own thoughts? You know, somebody is implanting their ideas of how to live and how to be a man. So I think it's even me, like what I'm saying is through my own life, this is just what I've kind of learned. And I think you have to be able to take a step back, zoom out and re reassess who you're living for as a man. I think that's huge. That is huge. Yeah. I like that. That was yeah. a lot. That was a lot of points there, but I, I think I brought it to you. Love it. <laughs> we, love, we love it. Get gets the mind going, you know what I'm saying? But um you know, I've I've had a couple guests on here now and I've asked them about how to find purpose, right? And it's really interesting. Every single person so far, no miss, has said start with physical health. And I feel like that's huge, right? Because let's say someone's in this like purposeless state, they're just drifting, they don't know what to do, like physical exercise, like you said, invol voluntary suffering is like the one thing that's going to get you out of your mind into your body. And if there's anything that's then going to get you like thinking better thoughts, it's, you know, just detaching from your thoughts in your head for a second, going to the gym, going for that run, like pressing out a heavy set, like so heavy or so difficult that you can't even possibly think about anything else. You just have to focus yeah. on not dying under this bar right now. So, yeah, I mean, we're in a world where everyone is kind of copycats. You're kind of always trying to assimilate to who you to this guy and this guy and when you're in that moment where you're pushing out that last rep or you're you're you know you're fatigued you have no choice but to be yourself in that moment that's real authenticity and that's kind of the the seed that kind of sprouts um you know your your real goals your real desires your real feelings and that's the baseline of confronting who you really are and huge Right. So now that we're on this topic of physical health, once again, I'll say you were a gym bro back in the day. So how has your training changed now? Like, would you say you're more focused on, for example, athleticism right now over anabolism? I think that's a word, right? Anabolism? Just getting anabolism versus just being agile. How would you say your training is nowadays? Um, I always describe it as a order out of chaos. I've definitely gone through a lot of phases. I've gone through the bodybuilding. I've gone through, you know, yoga. I did a lot of yoga back in the day. Um, I actually went to a yoga retreat in, in Norway for like a couple months. I volunteered tiered there. Um, and then it got to kettlebells. It got to functional training, goda. Like there's so many different ways to move your body. And really all it's doing is kind of creating a a primal movement, right? A primal kind of wanting to touch your your toes. You know, we were just t kind of talking before we we started here that you know the Sam Sulik and these these types of huge beefed up bodybuilders that can't run a mile. I mean, well, he does cardio kind of, but you can't touch your your toes. You can't really, you know, you want to be mobile. You don't want to just be huge, massive, like a you know just for for looks. You want to be able to to climb you want to be able to have this lasting movement longevity into old old age that's why heart health is huge you want to be hitting that i believe it's what like hrp or H hrv that max heart rate variability a few times a week which is going to come with you know uh running or bike or cycling i'm not saying that cardio is huge but you want to be able to push your heart to the limits mm. um that's that's the essence of heart heart health really it has to be able to take that to take that that on um and then yeah the the progressive overload side of things i'm also still doing bodybuilding type training but i'm also doing kettlebell cleans and kettlebell swings and stretching a lot so it really is just incorporating movement really not not just static movements but lots of limber mobile it's hard. Like I said, it's it's order out of chaos. So I'll be I'll be doing hot hot yoga one one day and literally dying of kettlebell training the next day and then squatting the next. So it is it's just, it's a whole package. But you know that's longevity. Like recently, I've been very fixated on this idea of being sevens across the board in every area of life as a man. 
So I think that even correlates to this. Like I would argue that the healthier person is the guy that's seven in yoga, seven at kettlebells, a seven at bodybuilding, and the seven at biking or whatever, versus a guy that yeah. a ten at bench press and a zero across the board can't yeah. stand on one leg because he's gonna fall over, can't hop on a bike because I don't know, just has zero cardiovascular health. Like he, and you yeah. like we're saying like these samsu like types like have a look at rich piana you know whatever you look like <laughs> amazing cool yeah you look big whatever but may his soul rest in peace he should have lived on longer you know like i know yeah, he yeah. lived a good life by all means you know and it's what he wanted to do but and you know to sorry to cut you off but to add to that seven i mean you've been training us to like muay thai and stuff so i think martial arts is huge too. You want to be a seven in self-defense too. All the muscles in the world aren't gonna stop, aren't gonna help you if some some hundred fifty pound like like blue belt just takes you down and chokes you out. You know that's the most humbling thing thing possible. So if you you have to be willing to you know also go one one on one and train wrestling, jujitsu, boxing, what whatever it is, but to feel physically capable is huge. Going earlier to on. It's a huge part of being a man, but also being fit as well, you know. And uh, Homer, do you do any martial arts, any striking sports, BJJ, anything? No, I trained BJJ for almost three years, a couple years oh. ago, and I'm 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 itching to to get back in it, and I'm gonna get back on the mat soon for sure. I mean, there's nothing like it. That is the ultimate workout. Man. That's crazy yeah. stuff. Dude, I was just gonna say I've maybe done it for six months ish total i'm not graded but dude the most humbling experience of my life i remember this was two and a half years ago i was living in the netherlands and uh i saw my gym oh yeah bjj jiu-jitsu come join whatever free first class so i was like oh yeah cool you know i'll go whatever i'll go and i was pretty lean at the time you can scroll it would be you know my first couple posts on instagram whatever i was uh i would say sub 10% body fat. So I was really lean and I was doing good at the gym, lifting heavy, whatever. So I was like, oh yeah, fuck it, BJJ. I'll go. Yeah, cool, whatever. And I went and, you know, you do your warm up, whatever, you do your training. And then at the end of the session, you have a couple rolls, a couple rounds, right? So my first session ever, the, uh, the trainer probably saw that I was a bit cocky. You know, he's like, oh, this guy, you know, he thinks he's the shit, you know, just because he can lift weights, whatever. I remember he put me up against this like, 50 plus year old lady and i'm about to think <laughs> but she was probably a head and a half smaller than me you know so she's up to my chest let's say but she was a blue belt and i remember yeah. thinking in my head like oh dude i'm just i'm about to fold her up like there's no way that my strength can compete against her you can already guess how this story ended she folded <laughs> shit up she choked me out with the most humbling experience of my life getting full yeah many you know it's one many many such cases man yeah, and dude. that's that kind of sparks it in you man if you uh that's that's uh, a glaring weakness right it's a glaring uh it's it's you have to over overcompensate for that right like you want to get better it sparks this thing of oh i, I mm -hmm. want to get better at this and it's not only mental you realize i mean it's not only physical you realize how how mental it is it's so much tech technique it's so much body awareness and weight leveraging it's it's so, it's so crucial to, to like that true body awareness. Mm. So yes, I am now a firm believer that someone should do one martial art for a long stint of their life. Don't care what it yeah. is, you can do judo, aikido, take one. No, I did take one for a lot of my life. You can do boxing, whatever it is, you should do it. And just to expand on that as well, people nowadays tend to gravitate towards comfort right i feel like comfort is the enemy nowadays and com equals stagnation stagnation equals misery so with regards to hobbies people rarely nowadays tend to go outside their comfort zone so if someone knows that oh no like i, I suck at surfing i'm never gonna go surfing why would i go surfing i suck at why would i go rock climbing you know I, I i can't rock climb i can't do this i can't do that there's so much power in doing something that you've never done before because we all like to feel competent. I'm like the big G, you know, I go to the gym. I know exactly what I'm doing. Not to lick my own ass, but I look better than 95% of guys here in the gym, whatever. But there's so much power in going 
doing something like, for example, BJJ for me back in the day that I had no idea about and stepping down from this like master high old level to just being a complete beginner. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You just do it in mindset, man. For yeah. sure. And mm -hmm. you know, things because like you keep doing the same repetitive things. Yeah, you're good. But like, dude, the ultimate freedom, I feel like is just going doing something you've never done before. Like if you've never surfed, you go surfing, you fall, you might, you know, oh, you might even get a little scratch or whatever because you fell off or you can't stand on the board and people are looking at you funny. Like, dude, that it's I'm addicted to the feeling of doing new things and being absolutely incompetent. And then that arc of just going from this newbie to being decent at it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, definitely. Uh, 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 you're, you're good, and you're you're literally doing that, even if it's not physical, which is the most important one. But you know, you're traveling everywhere, you're getting new experience. That's that's life experience that you're you're open to, which is something that a lot of people should should be open to. Just shifting paradigms, and you know, con con convenience and comfort is degradation. Mm. Like full full stop. If you're, if it's not even like the it's not even that these people are afraid to fail at the said activity that they're avoiding it's the fact that their identity is tied to the the illusion that they're the best in this comfortable situation that they've created for themselves right so if you're going to the gym every day you're like just like you've said i understand this this is what i can can do and i'm and i'm good at it but they're kind of unconsciously afraid of what the other side of that hard task will do to the wiring of who they are. It's kind of reality shifting because you go just like that. You go, you, you think you're a badass and you go and some lady just chokes, chokes you out. You could either like, you could either like whimper and, and, and kind of fold, or you can like rise up to, to the occasion and be a man about it and willing that damn, like, okay, let me get better at, at this. And it's not even, it's, it's also, there's a, it's like even as simple as an ice bath. Like you don't want to jump into that ice bath. You don't want to rock climb. You don't want to skydive. You don't want to do this. Imagine the feeling after going against the grain and deciding you did something you don't want to do or that is difficult. That is the essence of achievement. That's that's being a man. That's like what men have always done. Lean it, lean into the hard, lean into the adversity because what's on the other side is way better than what's on their coward side, really. That's business. That's everything, man. I like how you top that off with essentially saying that that's the meaning of masculinity is leaning into your fear and living just beyond it, you know, like chasing after this grandiose purpose that scares you, but doing it anyway, because you know that you must, that is, uh, <laughs> that is, yeah. that is deep, man. Maybe a little too deep for your average listener, but in due time, you will all understand. <laughs> that's the uh, heroic mission, brother. <laughs> Right. Um, so we're coming up to about an hour and the, there's just one little question that I want to ask you. And I believe it's going to help out a lot of people, right? Because a lot of people, you know, for example, stumble across accounts like yours and mine and think that this lifestyle is so not only woo woo, but like grandiose and extreme and we're hippies and we're weirdos and we spend the whole day doing all this kumbaya shit. Like, not at all. So, oh, and, and another thing is as well that people will say, I don't know if it's happened to you, but dude, I've gotten like a thousand comments about this in the last week is that we're trust fund babies and daddy's money and <laughs> all, all of this that, oh, it'd be nice if I, if my dad was a millionaire, like, dude, I'm from the most middle class family, Polish, but uh, anyhow, I want to ask you your daily routine. What are some of your non-negotiables? What are some things that people can do that you do? that have helped you tremendously throughout your life and improved your health, your mental health, your physical health. What's your average day look like? Obviously, you started on the beach. What's next? What's next? Um, well, today specifically, there's some, some big UFC fights coming, so I'm going to watch those. But on a regular day, um, definitely, you know, you want to focus on things that are going to lift up your energy. Your, your, you want to start the day high energy. The opposite of low energy. So low energy is going to be getting on your phone, you know, God forbid, watching porn, mm. uh, sc scrolling, you know, all these these types of things that are kind of really accepted these days. You want to do the opposite, and you do it for a couple of days. You're going to realize, like, yeah, this is this is worth it. You don't need to be a trust fund baby to wake up and get sun in your eyes. 
So wake up, go outside, go for a walk is, is what I do. I go for a walk. I get my blood moving, maybe some jumping to get like the lymph- lymphatic drainage going. Um, take a cold shower. You want to wake up. You want to, you know, just get that hard task out of the way. You already achieved something. You took a cold shower. Um, you know, if you have work to do early in, in the morning, don't have the biggest breakfast breakfast you know you want to be able to eat light stay mentally sharp that's kind of what i do i leave kind of the big eating for post post training um definitely 30 minutes to an hour of sunlight daily um movement you want to prioritize movement you want to get some some lifting weights in you want to get your blood moving eat eat right try to find some stillness throughout the the day as well you want to be able to sit down breathe and um not have any stimuli, kind of like do that little mini break from any type of, of stimuli, I think is huge to kind of just have that parasympathetic nervous system to chill and just like get back to baseline. And um, yeah, man, it really comes down to being a, being a, being a real person, you know, you don't want to, you want to avoid, obviously you and I are creators, so it's inevitable that we're going to be looking at our phones, but you want to minimize it as much as possible you want to create more than you're con- consuming overall mm. and um i mean I'm, I'm really packing all these habits into one day that i'm not saying i do every single day but you want to be reading you want to you want to be doing things that are in intellectually stimulating and you know just helping foster new ideas and and solidify old ones you know you want to be able to have a, a foundation of health and growth and doing things that are sub- supporting that that momentum man yeah. oh dude i absolutely agree about the momentum as well momentum is what it comes down to and yeah obviously and, and you know for 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 people who are in you know a, a bad state or like a negative current mindset negative situation you have to realize that the yeah. momentum goes both ways you know at least you're not stagnant if you're falling back or you're if you're descending and you're ascending you know you there's no cap to how much you can ascend but there's a cap to to descending right if you lose all of your money you can't lose any more if you you once you hit that ceiling and if you're there you there's only one way to go from there so just make one good choice one good next next move and one one foot in front of the other man you know that was absolutely beautiful you pulled that out of nowhere wow I think that uh, I'm going to make a clip out of that, but wow, beautiful. Um, another thing I will add about those daily habits that uh, that you mentioned there a minute ago is, folks, notice how most of those are free. Most of them, yeah. you know, it's it's that simple. Like, I know, like, you know, like you said, at the end of the day, we are creators and we're passionate about this health thing. So we're going to have like these gadgets and we're going to have this supplement and this whatever that. But realistically, most of the things that we do for our health are absolutely free. Now, yeah, okay, a gym membership costs money and food costs money. But, you know, you're going to be spending that money anyway. So you might as well just say it's free. And, and yeah, then exactly. And like the cherry on top. There is nothing that will have as big of an impact as the basics and the foundations. And every single one of those is free. Yeah, hundred percent. Everyone wants to talk about how expensive it is to eat healthy, but I mean, you're probably spending, probably spending money on drinks somewhere, spending money on the club, and spending money on fast food. So you know, you want to al- allocate your money wisely, and it's going to be put to good use. What what better thing to invest in than your your health? You know, there you go, dude. And it, it, it's always the same people. You know, I've got people in my DMs as well. Like, oh, dude, but organic beef is so expensive. Like, hey. You smoke weed? Yeah, but, you know, I'm like, okay, cool. Like, do, do, do you see what you're, do you see what you're doing right now? Like, this is expensive, but what are you getting? Oh, dude, it's, uh. It's yeah, fun. put down the blunt, put down the, the blood and get some uh, Helios honey in your drop. Oh, cheeky, cheeky, cheeky. <laughs> what is Helios honey, man? Talk to me about that. What What's going on there? Honey, man. Little, little, uh, say, little shameless plug. Um. <laughs> Yeah, man, honey is super healing. Honey is is full of an, of an antioxidants, and you know it helps you. It, it scrubs your gut clean. It gives you energy during 
your training and a lot of the honey you see in shelves. And I really didn't even mean to go this way, honestly. I was just thinking like a positive health choice would be to spend money on organic food, well, organic well, honey, whatever. Funny because <laughs> that's a little synchronicity there. I was just about to ask you about Helios honey. So both went <laughs> perfectly. Absolutely. Perfect. Yeah, just most most honey on, on the, the shelves is heated, ad adultered, and just really not what actual honey is. Mm. And um, the, the main thing being that a lot of the plants that are pollinated by bees to create most of the honey you see is sprayed with a bunch of pesticides and glyphosate that's, you know, ruining your gut health and ruining a lot of things of baseline health that you might not realize are, are happening to you, but they're just contributing to a very in, inflammatory state. So to get honey, which is actually like, you know, anti-inflammatory without the pesticides, which Helios honey is, it's completely glyphosate free. Um, it's definitely, you know, worth, worth trying out. We're, we're sold out now, but we're definitely going to be coming out with some, uh, winter flavors soon. Mm. So winter flay, I was there eucalyptus on the menu or something like that? All sorts of different <laughs> flowers. What? Yeah, I guess I guess I'll say it now. Yeah, so it's going to be eucalyptus and and tamarind. Tam so that's yeah, man. So so tamarind actually promotes uh, de detoxing fluoride from from mm -hmm. the body, which you know we all have uh, from the water and the the toothpaste that we've all been using probably our whole lives. We definitely have some calcification going on um, in the pineal gland. Not many people want to, you know, they want to call that like, like, like woo woo too, but tap water is definitely con contributing to that, that fluoride stare and all the, you know, the people around you. So um, definitely remove, wait, oh yeah, tamarind. Yeah. So tamarind promotes just removing that fluoride from your, from your body and from your, your brain. So we have some tamarind honey coming out, which is super sweet too, and just really, really healthy, so. Absolutely wild. I've never seen that anywhere. And that's funny you say, because tamarind grows here in abundance as well. I believe we have some back there. And cool. the place where I go surfing is called tamarind here as well, because there's wow. a bunch of tamarind everywhere. Um, and I was actually meaning to do a tamarind detox as well back in the day i remember i did a tamarind paste detox i don't know if you've ever done that where you just no. chug the tamarind paste it's super powerful dude you like you take shilajit i'm guessing right yeah yep so it almost tastes a bit like that and dude it just like for the first three days when you start you just feel amazing you do get some weird bowel movements but uh you feel absolutely fantastic so uh Right, I believe we're coming up to about an hour here now. Tell me when can people expect this honey, and then you can wrap it up with telling people anything else that you have in mind that you'd like to share, what your socials are, and then I will let you enjoy your beautiful Saturday in Miami. How about that? <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, uh, yeah, the honey should be coming out early December. I'm not really sure uh, exactly the the date yet, but it will be eucalyptus and tamarind in abundance and yeah just stay on the look for that man over helios everywhere on on instagram and twitter as well and yeah man just uh, i look forward to to growing in the honey space and the holistic space and many things to to come but i'll leave that to the future mm. and yeah, man, thanks for thanks for having me bart man it's been a great talk that, I had so much fun. Just one little thing. I know it's your company, but I'm going to plug it at Helios underscore honey for the best. There, we go. <laughs> there you have it. Um, don't be shy. This is uh, this is the end of the podcast. You can say anything you want. But uh, dude, yeah, Homer, I had such a good chat with you. That was absolutely fantastic. Uh, there's one thing that's bugging me, and I wish uh, the viewers could see your handsome face because I'm getting an exclusive look <laughs> that nobody has ever got. No homo. But yeah. Uh, it is what it is. So yeah, appreciate dude. that, brother. <laughs> no worries. Uh, thank you so much for your time today, man. I had a really great chat, and uh, yeah, I'm wishing you the absolute utmost best for the rest of your weekend. Cheers, man. Likewise, brother. And to all the viewers, listeners, this was episode 15 of the Fundamental Wisdom Podcast with your host Bart, Coach Bart K. Excuse me, still a little bit rusty. Expect more consistent episodes and uploads soon. I have the momentum and flow going again, so I'll chat to you on the next one. Peace.